The product rule was to do with differentiating things that are, as the name suggests, something times something else, right? The quotient rule is not something times something else, it's something divided by something else, right? So the way I'm going to prove this for you is by starting out by differentiating, setting out to differentiate a quotient. Now, for reasons that will become clear in about 45 seconds, rather than defining this as u and v, which is the letters I've been using all the way along, I'm going to define these first as p and q. So I'm going to write it like this. Again, I'm writing it in function notation, so it's not p times x. That's p is a function of x. q is also a function of x. So p over q, it's a quotient. What am I going to do with it? Okay. Now, as I said before, the quotient rule follows immediately from the product rule. So we've known, we've seen it so many thousands of times that many uh, techniques in mathematics boil down to turning a problem you don't know how to do into one that you do know how to do. So I'm going to write this quotient as a product, because I know how to deal with products. So instead of writing this as something divided by something, I'm going to write the division part of this as a multiplication. So what would I have to multiply this by that would achieve the same effect as dividing by q of x? 1 over q of x would do the job, right? If I said multiplied by 1 over q of x, that's a product which produces the same result as this quotient. However, I'm going to do one slightly different thing. Rather than write it as 1 over q of x, I'm going to write it as q of x to the power of negative 1. The reason why is because in terms of differentiating, I know what to do with powers. I'm quite good at those, right? So I'm trying to draw on all of this prior knowledge that I used to have to be able to tackle this new problem. OK, so why did I not choose u and v, even though I've been using them quite consistently? And I will by the end of this. Answer, to use product rule, I need to define these two parts of the product as u and v. So I'm going to call this guy u, and I'm going to call this whole thing here, including the negative 1 and all, that's my v. Okay, so you can see why I didn't want to call, if this was u and this was v to the power of negative 1, I didn't want to define v as v, to the, that's such a bad idea, okay, which I ran into before. So, this is a product now, so I can just treat this like a normal product, right? The derivative of a product is v u dash plus u v dash, yes? So let's walk through this one step at a time. v, I'm just going to write what v is. It's q of x to the power of negative 1. There's the v. What's u dash in this case? Well, it's the, diff diff it's the derivative of this thing with respect to x. Now, I don't know what p is, but I know notation to define or to describe the derivative of p. I just write p dash. So far, so good. So this is the, and I'll even write it again, this is the v and u dash of the product rule. Now I need the u and the v dash, so let's keep going. The u is just p of x. Okay, now here is the tricky part, and you really need to have your um, pinky cap on for this part. <coughs> I'm about to write v dash, v dash. However, as you notice in some of the problems that you've already been encountering, Frequently to do product rule successfully, you need to do chain rule once or twice in the middle of doing product rule. So that's why we did it in the order that we've done. And this is one of those cases, right? Do you notice this? You've got a function of x and it's being, it's having another function, namely this, applied to it. So this v is a function of a function. So therefore I've got to use function of a function rule. That's chain rule. So help me out. If that's v, How do I work out v dash? How do I do chain rule? Yeah, first take. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do with chain rule is work out the derivative of the inside, then I'll work out the derivative of the outside. Well, the inside is just q of x, so the derivative of the inside is just q dash. That's the derivative of the inside. Now I do the outside, well it's something to the power of negative 1. 
This is why I wrote it in, in index form rather than as one over something as a fraction. Um, you're going to bring that power out the front and reduce the power by one. Do you agree? Does that make sense? OK, now just watch out. Because we've used function notation, we have a lot of brackets flying around. So I'm going to use three levels of brackets here. So my first one is going to be a curly brace. OK, I'm going to bring that negative one, the power, out to be the front, the coefficient. So that's minus one. Yep. And then this whole thing, so that's this whole thing, its power gets reduced by 1. So it won't be negative 1 anymore. It'll be negative 2. There you go. OK. Now we've really done all the hard parts. Now I just need to tidy things up a teeny bit. OK. I've accomplished what I needed to highlight the fact that these, these are all functions. OK. So I'm now going to, on the next line, I'm going to write it without function notation. It, it's a bit tiresome, isn't it? I've written function of x, of x, of x. I've done it five times. I don't need to do this anymore. OK. This here is q to the negative 1 times p dash. You, yeah, you see, you see why I don't, I'm not a huge fan of natural notation. So to make it really obvious, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put tails on my, my negative one. Okay. Over here, what have I got? What have I got? I've got p q dash, and then in here I've got negative q to the negative two. How's it look so far? Oh, I haven't actually done any computation. I've just rewritten it in a bit tidier way. Okay. Okay, I can go a step further. Um, see these negative powers, right? I usually dislike writing things in negative powers. I usually prefer to write them as fractions. In fact, the only reason I write things in negative powers is so I can differentiate. Okay? So I'm going to get rid of all of the negative powers now. This makes this p dash on q. Yes? Over here, I've got p q dash. Uh, on, I should really write this minus sign over here actually, on q squared. Are you happy with that? Does that look okay so far? I've got two fractions. The normal thing I do when I've got two fractions is I want to seek to combine them. What do I need to do to combine them? Common denominator. In this case, the easiest common denominator is q squared. That's really easy to do. I don't have to muck with this guy at all. All I have to do is multiply this guy by q over q. So I'm just don't, don't blink or you'll miss it. I'm just going to multiply this by q and this by q. You, you OK with that? And now I can put it all together as one fraction. That's the derivative of p on q. Now, like I said before, I was going to end with u's and v's because that's the form that you've seen product rule in. And you will immediately see how similar but different this is to the product rule, right? So if I replaced my p's with a u and my q's with a v, like so, then this looks like it's going to be, oh look, surprise, surprise, a vuv again <laughs> and a v squared on the bottom. OK, so let's point out some things here before we finish, OK? For starters, it's not quite a vuv, is it? Like we saw before, it's a little bit different. How's it different? It's, uh, oh, for starters, there's the denominator. You divide by v squared. That's a big, obvious change. Uh, most people find that quite easy to remember because, look, the quotient rule is a quotient. That's nice, isn't it? In addition to that, though, please note, and maybe you want to highlight this, okay? Please note, there's a minus sign here. That's different from the product rule. Okay, and that's an easy thing to forget. Uh, no excuses for it. You have the reference sheet. Uh, but again, this is not hard to remember. You will use this so many hundreds and thousands of times, it will start to seep into your brain. Okay, uh, so it's a vuv of v squared. One more thing to point out for you. The product rule gives you this. U, v, v, u dash, u, v dash. Have you already noticed? It doesn't matter which one u or v is, does it? Right? You could interchange them. You would get the same thing. OK, did you notice that? Uh, instead of vuv, you'd get uvuv, right? But you'll get exactly the same thing. You're adding it, right? And an addition can be done either way. And the reason for that, the reason why the product rule is symmetrical in that way is because products are symmetrical. u times v is the same as v times u, so no difference. However, 
That's not the case over here, is it? Right? U over V, not the same as V over U. 